What's going on, everybody? Special guest today is Torian Wilson, founder of Crafting Linemen. In addition to, he was at the UA Next Future 50 as an offensive line coach. We're going to talk about Miami's guys there, some current players as well. Torian, what's going on? Hey, nothing much, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I wanted to catch up with you in Bradenton there. A lot going on with the sessions and, and everything. And uh, so I'm glad we're going to do this. And, I, I, you know, right when we got there, guys were checking in. I saw you already going to work with coaching and kind of just watching you coach these guys. We're going to talk about Francis Maui Goa. And then also a Miami, that's a Miami commit. And then Target Ola Salina, um, a target there for Miami. I guess with Francis, I want to, you know, start with the coaching stuff, because just the way you talk to him, it seemed, he seemed receptive. Can you maybe talk about that side of him? Because obviously physically we'll get into, but maybe his coaching, maybe some things you had to say to him even before it started. Yeah, so, I mean, um, this would be my second time working with Francis uh, at a Under Armour camp. And uh, every time that, you know, a coach, whether it was me or someone else, anytime we spoke to him or – had some type of advice or some uh, type of coaching tip for him, you know, he was definitely receptive. You know, he's one of those guys that's going to look you in your eye. You know, he's going, yes, sir. He's going to say, okay. Then he's going to have questions too, you know. So um, he, he's definitely a guy that you can see that wants to learn, that wants to get better. Um, and when you have a guy like that, especially at this level, at high school level, you know, that's huge. You know, you can see the upside. You can see why, you know, he's one of the top guys. What's kind of your, your messaging, uh, maybe with him in particular? Look, as a coach, you're coaching everything, but maybe in particular with him, um, either footwork or arm placement, what were some things that you you talked to him quite a bit about? Yeah, just one of the things was just uh, hand placement, you know, because we all know he has really good feet, right? So I was just giving him tips on where he can place his hand to help him, you know, keep the balance that he's already plays with. So now it's just making his job a little bit easier. And, um, you know, he did a great job because he took it and ran with it uh, during the one-on-ones and, and completely dominated it. Yeah, well, let's stay on that. Uh, well, you know, I, I guess I want to get breakdown of his game a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, let's talk. Let's stay with the footwork part because you said that's kind mm -hmm. of his strength right now. And look, it's obvious. If anyone hasn't seen him play, definitely just stay on the channel because I had – full highlights of Francis there. So you can look for yourself, but Torian with his footwork, kind of what stands out to you about that and essentially what makes him elite prospect at this time? Uh, to be honest, what really stands out? Yes. His footwork. It's the balance that he's, that he plays with, you know, when, when, when he gets to a certain spot where he's ready to take on, you know, the defender, the balance that he, that he has and the patience that he has, it's like, it's remarkable to be honest, like, because you don't see guys at his age that's doing that, that's playing with balance. You know, you see a lot of guys at his age are, are a lot of times are top heavy, you know, so their core isn't strong. So with him being able to play with balance, him getting his uh, his feet in the ground, being powerful, and then also along with that, just coming back to where he feels strong at. You know, a lot of times the offensive line is about where do I feel strong? When I, give, when I get a strike in, when I punch a guy, I have to feel strong. If I'm punching a guy off balance, then nine times out of 10, I'm still going to get beat because I'm not balanced. So with him and his footwork, you know, playing with balance, having a strong punch, uh, being powerful is, is uh, you, again, you can see why he's a top player. Torn, and just with with what you've done with linemen, I, I mean, it's pretty remarkable, all the guys you've worked with and, and kind of developing what you're doing. All guys are different in, in terms of, I'm sure you you get that. You, you kind of either, it's your, whether it's your one-on-one -on -one sessions, your group sessions, whatever, however you're teaching guys, What's with Francis that you maybe specifically identify or you feel maybe even because he's got some, a lot of skills that maybe you can identify and talk to him differently maybe than other guys, uh, other linemen um, w with him? Yeah, I mean, with, with Francis, you know, um, everyone, like you said, everyone is different. So sometimes you might have to back it up a little bit, tone it down a little bit as far as with your language and how you talking to him as far as, okay, he may, guys may not understand what I'm trying to get done. So I might, I might have to kind of dumb it down a little bit for certain guys to really kind of understand it. But Francis talking with him, I'm talking to him like I'm training Morgan Moses, one of my guys. You get what I'm saying? So for him to, to, to take the coaching and take the teaching as if I'm training one of my NFL guys, again, that says how special he is because I didn't have to tone it down for him. 
You know, he understood everything. And what he didn't understand, he came right back with a question. And so that right there shows me a lot too. You, you said he applied some things that you got, you taught him or talked to him about. Was there something in particular that you stood out, that stood out to you in terms of his technique, something that you saw or talked to him about early at the event? And then again, throughout the day, as it had a two-part day, the way that worked out there. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing was, you know, um, I got touched on earlier, it's just the hand placement. You know, uh, with him just understanding um, what is a defender trying to do? You know, give me the different moves. So I just talked to him. Okay, give me one move to, uh, one move a defensive lineman can do. Okay, give me another move a defensive lineman can do, right? And so one thing that I told him is that we have to dictate how a defender takes on us. We can't allow him to dictate the way we pass that. Because once we get into that, now we're playing from behind. So it's all about your angle. It's all about hand placement. And it's about your feet, your footwork. So that was the biggest thing, just making sure I'm getting – because his footwork, again, is, is really good. So now it's about getting my hand placement where it needs to be to allow me to start the fight and be strong and be powerful. Torian, it sounds like a very interesting concept because – it feels like, you know, just the nature of the, the position, the offensive lineman is obviously they're taking steps back either on their kicks on pass block, run block. But, you know, you always think as the defensive guys being the attackers, it seems like not a reverse in, in philosophy, but definitely you want your guys, like you said, dictating uh, the play or, or essentially the, the matchup there. It sounds very interesting. I'm sure that sometimes maybe with young linemen, you've got to kind of get that in their head because just the nature of it. It does seem like it's, you know, you're always thinking about the, the, the defenders on the attack. No, exactly right. Exactly right. You know, and, and that's what they're being taught. You know, a defender, a defensive lineman, everything that he's doing is a natural position. He's running straight ahead in the sprinter's uh, position. Everything that we're doing as offensive alignment is unnatural. It's not natural for us to be setting backwards and taking on the wall rush or taking on the long arm or, or trying to defend moves and all these different things. It's not a normal position. So now with us being not in a normal position, we have to find different techniques and different ways to make sure that we come out successful. You touched on the one-on-one -on -one stuff. It seemed like there were a lot of talented players there, uh, the, the yes. way the event's set up. But any guy he went up against, he went up against a few different guys. He seemed to, or he did, he dominated the competition. Uh, what would you think of him kind of watching him go through it, not just in drills and listening to you, but actually applying that and what you saw going against those defensive guys? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to the, the whole talk of being patient. You know, playing, playing tackle, being an offensive tackle, you have to have patience. I tell my guys all the time, there's a calmness, a calmness that you have to play with when you play offensive tackle. Because if I'm getting out there wild, out of control, tensed up, he's going to use that to his advantage. But if I can get out there calm, relax, and then once he gets into my range, into my strike range, now that's where all the bullets fly. And that's where I'm ready to take on whatever he gives me. But from getting from point A to point B, it has to have a calmness. And that's one thing that I did preach to him. You have to be patient. You have to be calm. And he went out there and you can just see it. Like he just naturally just plays with a with a patient type of attitude. Torin, your thoughts on, you know, listed as a tackle. Um, guard comes up with him sometimes. You have a you have a thought on on maybe position flexibility with him or or maybe where you think he could be best at, or yeah, just your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, I, I can see him playing guard. You know, if if it got to a point where um, UM said, okay, we want to throw you in that guard. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I think he had excelled at that position as well. But I think he does have the feet to play tackle and stay at tackle. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I think wherever they throw him, I think he'll succeed. Uh, again, I wouldn't be surprised if he went in and moved in to guard. And I definitely want to stay more on UM because you've worked with some guys there. But let's let's stick with Olas. Uh, okay. Different type of prospect obviously, then Francis. Um, interesting background, a guy from Finland. What were your thoughts on, on Olas and just kind of seeing him and um, had you seen him before? Yeah, so again, this would be my, I want to say either second or third time working with Olas. Um, you know, and, and one of the things, man, like Olas is a big, strong, powerful kid. You know, uh, he's a mauler. Um, and from the first time of me working with him, uh, I can't remember the first time I worked with him, but it was maybe a year or so ago. You can see the difference in his game and in his body. Uh, when I first started working with him, you know, he was heavier, uh, a little bit slow-footed. 
you know, now me seeing him at the Future 50, and then I saw him a few weeks ago at a, at another UA camp, um, you could just see him, his body toning up, you know, getting rid of the baby fat. And you could just see, like, with him toning up and losing weight, you can see what that does to his footwork. You know, it makes him lighter on his feet. It allows him to have that quick twitch that, that you're looking for. Um, so you can definitely see the difference. What about skill-wise, uh, seeing a difference there, maybe from a year ago to where he's at now um, with, with what you've seen? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, before, uh, about a year ago, you know, he was, he was a little bit slow, you know, getting out of his stands, getting to a spot, playing from behind. He was top-heavy. You know, his core wasn't there. Um, he, and with his score not being there, he didn't have a strong punch. And so now you see him at the Future 50, and then a couple weeks ago um, – can't remember which camp it was. I don't know if it was Maryland or New Jersey, but, you know, seeing him, seeing him at that camp and dominating that camp as well and just seeing him playing with playing long. Before, I don't think he, he understood how long he was, his length, and how he can use his length to his advantage. But now you can see him playing with his length, playing strong, being firm, squeezing the core, engaging the core, and also playing lighter on his feet rather than being, you know, so like, like an uh, elephant stumping. You know, he, he's now being like. What, what about his coach? Not coachability, or maybe that's the term you like to use, but just how does he take coaching? Uh, what you've noticed with him? Because, again, he's a guy just with an interesting background and, and trying to keep it moving. Uh, what have you noticed with him or, or, you know, your interactions with him? Yeah, so same thing. A guy who asks a lot of questions, which is a great thing. Uh, asking questions, asking about different techniques. And it, it was funny because he started asking about just like what I think about the different NFL guys because he was talking about how he watched certain guys. And, you know, one thing I always tell, you know, my office alignment, like the great office alignment take pieces of everyone and kind of build it into your own niche. So, you know, with him asking questions about just the different pro guys, you know, that, that says a lot to me as well. Um, and you can tell, like, he's, he's a little more serious guy as far as wanting to get the job done. You know, he, he's not a real raw, raw, playful guy, um, which I love. Those are the type of linemen I love. Obviously, obviously you have to have balance. But uh, once we hit the field, you know, everything was kind of like locked in. You know, he, he had one goal in mind, and uh, he wanted to get that job done. Who were the who were the NFL guys that you remember him uh, either talking about? Do you remember? Yeah, so yeah, so we talked uh, we talked about Lane Johnson, uh, Teron Armstead. Um, then we talked about, uh, Tyron Smith and then, uh, we talked about Trent Williams, but I always tell guys like, you can't, don't, don't always watch Trent Williams because what he does is not normal. Yeah. There's certain guys that are just different, but like you said, taking pieces yeah. from d different guys. And especially if you yeah. can kind of maybe look at yourself and what you are and where you need to mm -hmm. improve on. Certainly that's a, a great way of doing that. Uh, the UM guys, Torian, um, John Campbell, Lauren Seymour, Usman Troyori, uh, those are some guys you've worked with. They're getting ready for their season here. Um, your, your thoughts on those guys and, and maybe what you're hoping, because each of them are in different situations with their uh, progression in their careers, but just your thoughts on, on those guys? Yeah, I mean, each one of those guys, you know, in my opinion, you know, bring something different to the table, obviously. Um, but all of them, you know, all the way up until this point have been just working, grinding, putting in the work in to um, – take that jump, take that leap uh, this upcoming season. Um, Non-stop working, uh, constantly putting in the work. So, you know, uh, this season, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to those guys, man, making that leap, making that jump, you know, just being consistent, staying consistent. And, uh, you know, and, and at that point, everything will, will take care of itself. Everything you will work, fall into place. Yeah, and you work with a lot of guys from different schools. How does that work yeah. in terms of, you know, obviously you want to pay attention to what they're being taught at their university. How, how does mm -hmm. that work? Do you have interactions with the actual coaches or what the players tell you that they want to work on? How does that interaction work with a trainer like yourself? So it's both. It's both. You know, I take, uh, so what I, cause I am a developer, lineman specialist working on movement and all these different things. So what I do is I take pieces of what their coach, whatever they coach want them to do, I communicate with the coach or I communicate with them. And uh, what we go over is because I don't want to change their game because I don't want to give you something and now you go there and your coach is trying to change everything that, um, you know, that you've just worked on this whole offseason. So it's about me taking what your coach want and putting my own flavor to it. 
and show you what I would do in certain situations. And then what I do too, and what a lot of my college guys like is that I have my NFL guys come in and, and they work with them as well. So they're hearing it not only from me, but they're also hearing it from the pro guys as well. Torian, I know you're really you're uh, really busy, so your time's valuable. I'm going to let you get out of here, but I appreciate you. The breakdown was great. Um, we'll keep it going, man. We'll, we'll talk soon. No, definitely. I appreciate it.